wow guys, I didn't realize how functional a quote-unquote golf cart lithium battery conversion kit could be for portable power solutions with like portable power stations like this, all the way up to full-size whole home backup solutions. I think you guys are gonna be shocked at how many applications this has and what an incredible value this brings. So let me dive into all these different scenarios so you can see just how functional and awesome a kit like this could be for you. And spoiler alert, it comes with its own charger. Right now it's dumping over a thousand watts into this portable power station and it's powerful enough to run single-handedly my massive whole home backup inverter. Let's open this bad boy up. Got uh, some documentation here. Obviously the battery is uh, right here. Let's see what we've got in these other boxes. In this box uh, we've got uh, some uh, self-tapping screws. We've got a series of bolts and washers. There are two different lengths of terminal screws. We've got some ratchet uh, tie-down straps. We've got uh, this uh, display right here along with a nice uh, extension cable. Got a little more uh, documentation for what appears to be a charger. Yeah, buddy, check this out. Got uh, this really nice heavy-duty charger, 56.8 volt, 18 amp. I don't see anything on these uh, cables that uh, tell me uh, their gauge, uh, but to me, it feels like maybe 12 gauge. Doesn't have to be crazy heavy for the charger, so we're only going to be pushing uh, 18 amps through it. And it does come with a nice uh, charging cable. Nice to see a standard end here, so if you lose this, you can easily replace it. It uh, does have a little charging indicator. I'll be testing this uh, charger a little later on. So it is a 51.2 volt nominal uh, voltage, 5,120 watt hours. You can charge it up to 100 amps. Continuous discharge current of 200, that's awesome. But, uh, and that's what you get with a golf cart style uh, battery here and obviously lithium iron phosphate. Obviously we've got uh, the terminals here and then aside from little handles here on the side, uh, we do have our little uh, screen connection port uh, right here. Let's just immediately try plugging this uh, screen in and see what happens. Only plugs in one way. Really nice connection though. Well, looky there. Really, really nice uh, state of charge indicator here. Our amps, our voltage, our temperature, our uh, estimated time to empty, which we don't have any load on it, so we've got a long, long time. Nice touch screen, so we can toggle the discharge and charge off and on here. And uh, we've got uh, just some more information, a cycle counter, which is pretty cool. Our max and our minimum temperatures, our status is normal. Page three, this is very cool. This shows you the voltage of every individual cell. And you just push and hold to power it off. Got this battery on the charger here. If you take a look at the screen, top right corner there, you can see we're putting in 16.5 amps. We've got the, the red light flashing on the charger. And then uh, I've got it plugged into this uh, power station just so we can see what kind of power we're drawing. It's saying we're pulling 972 watts. Uh, not very loud at all. Just a little bit of a fan noise going on here. In the manual here, uh, right here where my thumb is, uh, the peak discharge is 315 amps for 30 seconds up to 600 amps for three seconds. That's impressive. And it is rated IP65. And I got the app here, and we just gotta search for it. It's already found the Bluetooth, so we'll go ahead and connect. We've got our state of charge in percent, as well as amp hour right down here. We can toggle the charging and discharging off and on here. We've got estimated time to full, estimated time to empty, which is obviously grayed out because we're not discharging, we are charging at the moment. It's telling us if we're balancing or not. It also gives us our voltage and the power in watts, the amperage, cycle counter. Now we get our average voltage, voltage differential, our low voltage, and our high voltage on each of the cells. We've also got uh, some nice temperature sensors in both Celsius and Fahrenheit shown, which is very handy. And then all the individual cell voltages down here at the bottom. Going to the About tab down here, it just uh, gives us language option temperature. I'm going to go ahead and change that to Fahrenheit and a way to contact support. And that's it. So there's no way to adjust things or change anything. It's just a very detailed monitoring app, which is really all you need for uh, such a battery. Hey, charge it up to 100% uh, overnight. I've got uh, the Victron Smart Shunt uh, hooked up here, and uh, we're going to do a capacity test on this. And if you take note, uh, in the Smart Shunt app, everything is zeroed out. This is awesome. I got it uh, basically right at 19 amps. So really, really close to a 0.2C rate of discharge on this battery. So this should be perfect. Going to this. We're going to be waiting about five hours. Okay, just a slight uh, reconfiguration here. Still got the smart shunt here, still doing capacity test. Yeah, we're still sitting right at about 19 amps on that. But uh, what I've changed is I am now feeding uh, through these battery cables into these 1,000 amp bus bars that uh, are part of my DIY uh, battery system. Anyway, everything is isolated. Uh, every bank of these batteries has an isolation breaker. This uh, wall mount battery is off, so I am just feeding this 12,000 XP inverter with power from this Timgo battery. 12,000 XP feeds the sub panel, 
and I've got these plugs that to feed off of that and uh, currently I'm just dumping some power into this uh, anchor uh, power station. Okay, it's recording 0% and if we come and take a look, the shunt has officially crossed the 100 amp hour mark. So this uh, battery from Temgo passed the capacity test with flying colors. I'm going to let it keep going until it shuts down and we'll just see how far uh, it goes over. All right, the voltage is dropping quickly in the 43 volt uh, range, uh, but we did cross the 105 amp hour mark. Still got a little left to go, but uh, not too much. So anyway, I'm going to call the test uh, complete at this point. It smashed its uh, capacity test. So well done, Temgo. Very, very impressive. All right, we just finished the uh, capacity test. We're at 0% uh, sensitive charge, clear down at uh, 44 volts resting voltage, so very, very low. So we're going to now test and see how long it takes this uh, charger that was included to charge this from dead to full. I'll have uh, the display on, I'll have the stopwatch going, and then we'll also be able to watch the little status light on the charger itself. So let's go ahead and uh, plug it in. Getting the flashing red light for bulk charge. Go ahead and start the stopwatch. For you, it'll just be a couple of seconds here. All right, let's do heavy load testing on this Temgo battery. I don't think I'll be able to get it to kick off on overcurrent protection or anything because I don't think I have enough heavy loads to do it. Even if I move my whole house over to this uh, 12,000 XP, I don't have 12,000 watts worth of loads to put on this. And this is rated up to 250 amps continuous. This is rated up to 200 amps continuous, but it can surge up into the 300 amp range. So what I'm gonna do is just put as heavy of a load on this as I possibly can. Obviously, it's connected up, and only that battery is connected up to this 12,000 XP. It feeds this uh, load center, and then I've got two different circuits, 20 amps each, AC power, that is. On uh, one circuit, I'm going to be running this electric space heater. Then on the other circuit, I'm going to be running this electric heat gun. And then on top of all that, I'm going to fire this uh, AC unit up. This is a big 15,000 BTU portable air conditioner, and it has a huge amount of surge. I've got the Victron Smart Shunt here, so we can see, hopefully, uh, that uh, current. Okay, I've got uh, the heat gun running, and uh, as you can see from the app here, we're pulling just over uh, 20 amps from the battery. Let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, space heater going. 50-ish amps fluctuating a little bit uh, there, but uh, generally speaking, right around 50 amps of current from the battery. Let's see if this uh, AC unit uh, will start up. Oh, it surged up to 80 amps. I don't know if you saw that. Now 68, 70 amps. So yeah, this Timgo battery in conjunction with this massive inverter will run these loads all day long without even breaking a sweat. So here's the pretty awesome thing about uh, this battery, which also gives it a leg up over your standard server rack style batteries. It's got a 200 amp BMS in it. So you're able to run much heavier loads off a single battery to max out the capacity of this giant 12,000 XP. It's only 50 amps shy. So you just pick up two of these. You've got uh, the same amount of discharge power as you do with two of these giant wall mount batteries at a fraction, fraction of the cost. So I think uh, these golf cart style batteries really have a lot of merit in energy storage systems for your home. And let me show you the greatest hack ever that doesn't require a humongo uh, system like this. If you have just a simple portable power station like I've got right here, you can use this to significantly increase the functionality and runtime of a power station like this. The only requirement to make this work is you just gotta check your power station. This has a max voltage of up to 60 volts. This Temgo battery is currently sitting at 53.45 volts. So that is below the threshold of that. So long as the battery voltage is less than the max voltage of the input on your power station, this hack will work. So the problem I run into is this particular power station has a built-in battery and then it has a single expansion battery. That's as big and as much as you can expand it. Well, sometimes that just doesn't quite cut it. It's got a 2400 watt inverter. This can run everything that I need it to. Well, buying another power station that, that could support more batteries is very costly. The name brand expansion batteries are also very expensive for the storage you get. So simply go to Amazon and uh, get yourself a heavy cable, probably at least 10 gauge I would recommend. On one end, I've got a XT60i connector that will also work with the XT60 input on this power station. And then on the other end, it's got just simple ring terminals that uh, are screwed down to the terminal of the battery. So it's very simple. All I gotta do now is bring this over here and simply plug it in. And watch this. The power station is gonna recognize quote unquote solar. Look at that input surging. 300, 400, 500, 700, 800, 1,020 ish watts. And that power is dumping in through the solar port. So again, I'll show you right back here. So the power station thinks it's getting power from a whole bunch of solar panels when in reality, it's feeding off this battery. 
So one of these batteries is one kilowatt hour more battery capacity than what is in this main unit here and its expansion battery for a fraction of the cost. But wait, it gets better. As we can see here, this power station is capped at a thousand watts input from solar. Maybe you have more solar that could be deployed. Well, this battery can accept a massive amount of solar. So all you gotta do is go out and get yourself a MPPT solar charge controller. It's compatible with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Connect it on up to the cells in conjunction with your power station, just like I've got here. But now you can use a 40 amp charger. I'm just pulling numbers out of the sky here. But you could get a 40 amp MPPT, MPPT charge controller that would dump over 2000 watts of solar power into this battery. Whereas you'd be limited to only 20 amps, 1000 watts on this unit. So then you would be able to fully recharge this battery, even with this power station pulling its thousand watts every day with solar. Whereas you may not be able to do that here because you're limited to the thousand watts. And if you wanted to go bigger, you could. Maybe you have different kinds of panels. Get a 20 amp MPPT charge controller and put uh, you know, four panels on that, and then get another 20 amp charger, put four more panels on that, another 20 amp charger, all of that will work feeding into this battery. And then the power station will just pull the power that it needs from the battery. That just totally makes these portable power stations so much more functional and run for so much longer at a much, much cheaper rate. Now, if you look online, there's so many people that run into issues with using transfer switches and ground loops. And when they plug their power station in, it goes into bypass mode. It creates a ground loop and wreaks all kinds of havoc. So to get around that, people are buying these switching power supplies or something like that that takes AC power and converts it to DC power. And then they're feeding it into the solar input of their power station, just like I'm doing here with this battery. I recognize that uh, this battery kit is more expensive than one of those switching power supplies. But just think, if you spent your money on this kit where you got a massive battery storage, plus then basically one of those switching power supplies, because this takes AC power and turns it to DC power to charge the battery. So you could literally use this charger plugged in and that would allow you to accomplish what everyone is trying to do with those switching power supplies. But this I think is much more robust and much safer as charger. Then on top of that, you get a massive battery of expansion. And then you still have the option of adding on your MPPT charge controllers. Anyway, you can, basically microize a very large scale power system, much like this, all in one system, in a power station form, just basically with this kit as the main bridge between power station and your other accessories. I think it's a no-brainer. So those are my thoughts on how one of these uh, golf cart conversion kits could actually be really, really powerful in a home power backup system, even camping, whatever. It's small enough still that you can actually pick it up and move it. Now this monstrosity has a little less than three times the capacity of this Temgo battery, but it is a beast and not moving very easily. So you can easily use this at home for your backup power needs and then pick it up take it with you on a camping trip. I think it's super, super functional for all the reasons we just went over. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. I always love hearing from you. You always have so many great ideas and observations. Huge thanks to Timgo for sending this kit out to me. If you can't tell, I'm absolutely loving it. And I think uh, all of you will too. So I'm gonna leave links to it uh, down in the description so you can check it out further. You're gonna have a hard time beating the price that it's at. Can tell videos like this uh, take a long time to make and produce. If it's valuable to you, please consider giving me a like, a comment, a subscribe, and a share. Those are four 100% free things for you to do, but really, really benefit the channel tremendously. I despise things being stuck behind paywalls and different things. So anyway, uh, please do your free part uh, by doing those four things so that I can continue to bring valuable free content to, to you like this. We'll catch y'all next time.